Hello, lovelies, and welcome to Aren't You Exhausted, a podcast about Amber Lynn Reed, a 500 pound YouTuber on a weight loss journey to trolling her audience. Let's discuss the funny, silly, quirky little things that our girl gets into. And along the way, we can also discuss some of the people she's associated with online or in her personal life to add some flair to her story. I'm your host, Ashley, and let's start today's discussion. All right. Hello and welcome to another episode of Aren't You Exhausted? I'm Ashley, your host, and joining me again this lovely Saturday evening is my husband. I mean, technically, I can say that now as we just filled out the paperwork the day before. So give him a little yellow, Liam. No backing out now. We signed paperwork. I mean, technically we could back out, but no, I'm very excited. <laughs> Still yet to be determined on my part. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. So let's start the discussion. You got um... I've kind of broken this up a little differently this week because I didn't feel like writing out a bunch of stuff and I've kind of just caught the girls' videos here and there and random community posts from Foodie Beauty. Um, So we'll just go over some talking points. I just wrote notes on everything. Um, I wanted to discuss Amber Lynn's depression uh because here lately all of her videos have been kind of in the sad category we've had a lot of crying we've had a lot of fear and anxiety brought up we've had the health scares going on and not to mention the holidays are right around the corner (laughs) so she's unable to travel due to her size and due to the medical conditions she's got going right now um which even if she didn't have those medical conditions going right now, she wouldn't be able to travel regardless. Her lymphedema is just not in a state for somebody that would be able to travel more than a, a few hours, let alone 12 hours to see family and friends. Um, I know I discussed this with Liam uh, earlier in the week when we had watched one of her previous vlogs, but I think he even watched the Q&A with me. Yeah, I watched the q and I heard bits and pieces of it, and it's just, I mean, it's just constant whining and complaining when people are giving her, she wants this, she wants sympathy, which, okay, understandable, you made a YouTube channel all about yourself, you want sympathy, but the sympathy that she wants is so surface level, because the true, like, true people who care about you are actually going to want to know what's going on and want to try to help but she doesn't want that she doesn't want people asking questions she doesn't want people giving advice she just wants people to say i'm sorry i'm praying for you or something like that she doesn't want any actual help or advice yeah which i found extremely funny the whole wanting prayers and stuff and finding uh this whole uh religious arc that we're going on when becky's mother was (laughs) dying uh she was telling everybody that she didn't believe in God and she found it weird that people did. So it's, it's funny how the, uh, she went on the other foot. <laughs> if you know what I, if you know what I mean, which is really funny because Amberlynn never wears the right shoes for her feet, <laughs> but <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> but, I I really hate the medical clickbait that she's been doing here lately because, for one, she has not had a proper diagnosis as of yet. So, like, the cancer, the cancer clickbait from earlier when she was discussing her side effects of Ozempic that changed because people had backlash over it. <laughs> um, but also, like, claiming she has things like the collapsed lung. It, it wasn't a diagnosis. The ER su- suggested she may have it, but they would have to test for it. Um, she, she wonders how these rumor mills get started. But if you're, if you're not giving somebody the full picture, they're going to speculate on what the full image is. If you can't give a full view on something or a full 
story on something, maybe save the information for a later date when you have the full view or the full information. At least if you don't want people to discuss their opinions on what they think the situation or the possible diagnosis is. Yeah, I mean, we just, we, this is kind of like what we were discussing where it's just like she doesn't want anybody worried she doesn't want people being like oh what 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 diagnosis she's like well don't don't ask me about that don't ask me about this or that i mean she just wants people to watch her videos and just take it at face value and treat it like entertainment but the truth is it's not really that entertaining yeah and also a lot of the time she she just sits there and says she's going through stuff we know you're going through stuff you're depressed over this is like the 10th year on youtube of having a weight loss channel and you're larger than what you started out as and you keep gaining and losing the same hundred pounds throughout all of this so of course it would be depressing yeah i mean you know honestly if you add up all the hundred pounds that she's lost and don't like add the ones that she's gained she's a very successful weight loss channel so i mean she should be proud of herself the only problem is she's also a very successful weight gain channel and therein lies the issue really yeah um for the most part these last i would say almost a month maybe a little bit over have been pretty negative um the even the newest q a really digging her heels in that she's oblivious as to why people feel she's trolling when she claims that she's not though she also told us that she's trolled in the past and claims to love doing it but never sees herself stopping doing it but claims that she's not trolling as frequently now. So rest assured that she's telling you the truth now. Okay, Bambi. <laughs> if you've watched the Q&A at all through other reaction channels or through herself, uh, you know where I'm getting that reference. <laughs> yeah, that was the most convoluted way of saying like the whole nickname thing. It was like, well, because I like, I like Bambi. And Bambi falls in love with... I don't even know the character, Feline. So I call her Feline because I don't want to call her wifey because I called her wifey, but then people, but it's like you, I called her wifey. It's like, bitch, you did it. Like <laughs> nobody is putting words in your mouth. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> also, uh, the fact that she keeps editing her narrative for views, like using PTSD as an excuse as to why she's lied or had these moments where she's forgotten what she said on certain things. And also taking medical professionals' opinions as a diagnosis and running with it and claiming that she has those ailments when she's never actually been properly tested or diagnosed with them. Um, an example, her bipolar disorder, which I had previously brought up from a reaction of her one of her videos from a, while, a little while ago. Also... How the hell does Becky keep on being brought up in these fucking Q&As? Because their relationship was almost a, like probably a little over a year ago now, Becky era. Stop dragging Becky back into it. I'm pretty sure all of these Q&A questions came from Amberlynn herself or she like picked through the Am Babies uh, questions because I know for a fact that I asked a question that was pretty... <laughs> I mean, it was pretty, it needed the information, but it never got answered. Um, but it's just a way for Amber to talk shit and put Becky down. Like, does it make you feel any better? I mean, at least Becky's out there working a nine to five job trying to do better for herself <laughs> and getting out of the house. Like, you haven't left that apartment other than these doctor's appointments for a while. Yeah, I mean, I don't obviously don't know much about her uh you know history with their exes or whatever because i'm pretty much once i came on this podcast is the uh like that's the newest i knew about these people that's what i know about them personally but it does seem to me like you know she i mean this is why you don't you know make your whole life on youtube because then people are gonna ask about it all the time and as much as like i'm sure becky or whatever is trying to move forward i mean she was she knew what she was getting into being with this person she she knew the way the audience was and she should have you know, she, she's kind of realizing it now, I'm sure, having to hear about it. Yeah, I think, uh, well, th that's the whole thing with uh, this new relationship she has with Jade. 
uh, she doesn't throw a camera in her face. She didn't give the other two an option or the other three. She didn't give Crystal an option. She didn't give Destiny an option. She didn't give Becky an option. She just kind of threw the camera in their faces because at least Destiny and Becky, like that was expected because she was a YouTuber and that's how they met her was through watching her YouTubes. But (laughs) what about Crystal? Like Crystal said many times in her vlogs that she didn't want to be filmed and she filmed her anyhow or added her in there anyhow so yeah it just seems to me like she's trying to do better um you know from everything you've told me we're gonna move on to Chantal now uh Chantal here as of late has really been uh taking on the reaction channels uh constantly addressing certain channels and kind of with such like vulgarity that she I mean, she better get in in while she can because in Kuwait, this new lifestyle she'll be melding into, this behavior is a no-no. She can't be this venomous (laughs) in this new lifestyle. Uh, She's been wreaking havoc in the community tabs, uh, taking the time to shout out pick-me's that try to coddle her narrative as her family and friends do around her, but Maybe more so for some extra views and eyes on their content. Um, All just a day after saying she was going to go radio silent due to a fake foodie beauty commenting on people's communities and channels to focus on her Instagram. So, like, foodie beauty's everywhere right now. She's all over the place, whether she wants to be radio silent or in everybody's comment sections, because she has hers turned off. Yeah, I mean, she's just, uh, it's every other day. I mean, honestly, it's funny how, like, I understand the interest in this, but to me, it's like watching the same show over and over again, where it's like, you watch it from start to finish, and then it starts all over again. I mean, that's her. She's She does something, and she says, I'm not going to do X, Y, and Z. About a week goes by, and she sticks to what she said she's going to do, and then lo and behold x y and z i mean this whole new arc has just been i'm done with youtube i'm done with you know smoking i'm done with you know anything like that and then about a week goes by if that and then she's on live stream youtube smoking whatever it is it's just you know it's it's mind-boggling like i i get the i get the interest but to me it's just like it's just somebody who is like people do this all the time they say stuff and then you know they don't really mean i mean at new year's resolutions that's essentially what it is it's saying you're gonna do something and then nobody actually falls through with it the problem is not everybody puts it on youtube and uh is held accountable by you know thousands of people and and most people try to stick with what they say they're gonna do for more than three or four days so therein lies her biggest issue i think uh as a broad stroke yeah, what's funny is it didn't even last a day where they're saying that she was going to be radio silent. Um, also, there is questioning of if uh, Sala, her Kuwaiti prince, charming is a scammer or not. Because I I guess it's been found that a lot of Kuwaiti men have been scamming Canadian people for visas for Canadian citizenship. Um, I don't know whether or not that's truthful or not. I'm just throwing it out there into the world that that's a possibility of her missing the red flags. But also, if you go on the Kuwait subreddit, which was brought up by another reaction channel, that they uh, saw that somebody had posted as Foodie. Um, Well, not using Foodie's name, but using the scenario that she's in, um, asking if she would be able to stay with, like, stay the night with an unmarried man in Kuwait uh, and asking for, like, things to do while he's at work. (laughs) And everybody was like, there's a lot of red flags here. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, if anybody here has ever watched 90 Day Fiance, uh, you know, me and Ashley love watching it together. Uh, I mean, this is pretty much par for the course where people come over and they think that everything is just like it is over here in America or Canada or, you know, any place that's kind of more lax in religious views. Uh, But they don't realize that um, what it really is like to live in a place that is, you know, run by religion. Like, you know, you you can talk about America and how we are 
you know, how, how we're run by religion, but we're a lot freer than other countries. And it's, it is a culture shock when you go over to some place and yeah, I mean, she's going to have to follow the rules or she's, this is not either going to work out or it's going to get bad. I mean, I don't, I don't know, but if she thinks that she's going to go over there and charm him, uh, into giving up everything that he's believed in for his whole life for a, a chance with her, boy, she's got another thing coming. And then uh, I did a little bit of digging around and through some research I found that in Kuwait it's actually not permissible for a Muslim man to marry a woman who isn't a practicing Muslim. Uh, she either has to be Christian or Jewish and she must worship Allah as her one true God. Also, most Muslim families will look down upon lewd behavior or women shown to be promiscuous, which could mean a bit of trouble with the domestic should the wedding go through and Chantal be subjected to family gatherings on a regular basis and being expected to clean, uh, be a modest wife that she signed up to be for her prince. Um, Chantal's name change on her Instagram, adding her new last name, which is Sala's last name, which is funny at the same time because she hasn't researched any of the culture or the religion of Muslim because according to Islam, it is not permissible for a woman to claim the husband's last name as their last name um, because that's the last name of his father, which is they call it haram and it's against Islam as it's saying that his father is also her father, <laughs> which is a no, no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is just more of the same, just not thinking things through. I mean, trust me, I'm the king of not thinking things through and just, you know, g getting, trying to get what I want as soon as I want it. And I get it. I understand, especially when it comes to dating, you want to, you know, you want to be with the person that you're in love with or whatever it is. You, it's, This is why online dating is hard or long distance is hard because you want to be with that person. But she's going to have a rude awakening when she realizes that all this shit that she thinks is going to be so easy is not easy at all. Yeah. Also worth mentioning, uh, how is Chantal going to look after her new place uh, at home and finance her trip and time spent in Kuwait? Because she does make a bit off of YouTube, but surely not enough to manage essentially two households. Yeah, so I'm I'm a little confused. She is moving there, or is she just going to visit f at first? She's supposedly going to visit for like three months. What the fuck? Yeah, so how is she going to... I don't know how she's going to pull that off, especially because I'm pretty sure her paychecks are going to be a, quite a bit less than they normally are because she's not live streaming as often now. Yeah, I I don't know. I I really don't know her plans because I don't watch her videos. I only know I only know from this weekly update that I, that I get, and and Ashley drops me a few uh, interesting things throughout the week. So I'm kind of up to, you know, uh, up up to. Up, you have up. like the you have like the bullet points. Right. Yes. Sorry. My brain shut off. Um, but yeah, so I'm not really sure what she's planning on doing. I know she was planning on getting a house. Um, it seems kind of wild to get a house and then move, then go away for three months. It seems like she would have been better to stay, like maybe see if she could get an extension on her uh, current place until she was ready to come back. Obviously, she didn't know about this guy, which is another reason why this is wild because she has already made plans to move in, move to a new place, yet in less time. She is already ready to marry somebody and see him for three months. So just, you know, think about that. Yeah. And um, she's also made claims to have not done harder drugs until she was with Nader. And it was due to his abuse towards her. And it was supposedly her way of coping. Yet she was caught in an old live stream talking about asking Nader for the substances for fun the first day of meeting him. And claimed he didn't start acting differently with her and being abusive until after he made his YouTube channel. So, kind of contradictory stories that she's got going on. So, of course, it's confusing to know, like, where the hard drug use started or if it was always there. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, no, I'm not... The whole Nader thing is a whole other story, but it does seem like... He is an easy person to blame for anything that she doesn't want to take responsibility for because of the way he treated her. And I get I get that that he's a bad guy, but it doesn't really 
you know, it, it doesn't mean that you get to just erase your past and say everything bad I've ever done. Oh, it's because of him. Like, she's just using him as a scapegoat because everybody's against him. So, it's whatever. I mean, you know, that, but it just seems to me like she's just going to say, oh, because I was treated bad, poorly, this happens. Or because I was treated poorly, this, or this, and this, and this. And it's just like, you know, yeah. <laughs> And uh, I still find it funny that she wears the hijab, but doesn't practice any of the modesty that the hijab is supposed to be utilized for. I mean, yes, it covers her head and like most of her decolletage and such that she shouldn't be showing. Um, But she's still doing some form of drugs, which anyone who's witnessed her uh, wheelchair beezing in the past would know the telltale signs of when she's been using and she's still using even with the latest live stream that she did the night before with Sala in the chat you can tell that she was she was high <laughs> like she was eating cake with her fucking hands like it was pitch dark in her room she was eating cake with her hands in her bed she was high um but she's still just as invic- vindictive and callous towards people and all this time not live streaming has left time for her community posts the shorts and the shit talking and reaction channels comment sections if she truly didn't want the smoke she would just stop commenting on it and continue spilling her fantasies to her members aka beezers it would be as simple as that just not react to it let people think what they're going to because if you truly secure in the person the person you are or in yourself it shouldn't matter what people on the internet think yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, she's obviously not following any of the rules that this guy, you know, this guy's religion or whatever asked for, yet he doesn't, it doesn't seem like he's really given her shit for it, so that does kind of tie into the whole, is he just using her, because it just seems like he's like, you know, if he was truly in love with her and saw the way that she acted, I guarantee you, uh, he would make a big deal. He wouldn't be sitting in her chat watching. He's just he's just buying this time until he gets whatever he needs from her. I mean, I don't know if it's that or if he's just naive to what she looks like when she's in that frame of mind, like when she's high or inebriated in some way. So I don't know. He could be just going with the flow because he, at the end of the day, he gets money from her attention from her and will eventually get some kind of benefit uh if any kind of marriage goes through (laughs) but who knows yeah where's the reality show on that marriage like seriously that would be great somebody needs to outside of her film this as a a separate youtube channel because obviously she's gonna film it to make try to make herself look good somebody needs to like document this uh, just to like out of like this i would watch to see what the fuck is going on yeah it it definitely reminds me of a 90 day fiance storyline but that's all from us tonight you guys i hope you guys have a great saturday night and uh i will see you guys again on the next episode on wednesday which will be two days from our wedding and next saturday's episode will officially be married yay (laughs) <laughs> but we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. If you want to help support this podcast, please subscribe, like, or leave a comment.